The Legacy of Wisdom Project gathers and publishes answers to many of humanity's most pressing questions from some of our most experienced and profound leaders. Do you, do you find that a useful technique, uh, the so-called bucket list? Well, the bucket list is a funny kind of joke. It's kind of like... Uh, you know, it's like all the dream vacations that you never took kind of level. But if you go deeper, it, it is relevant to like, what if I only had a year left to live, if I was going to die tomorrow, what would I do today? Would I go to the office as usual? Would I visit or call my most loved ones? You know, or, or would I play golf or sit in the hot tub and get massaged or what? And I think that's a great way to live your life every day. So... In the, if in the light of our own mortality and the impermanence of things and tenuousness of life, so changeable, so impermanent, so uncertain, I think it's good to think about our priorities. And um, some people have advised us, wise elders of the ancient wisdom traditions have said, it, you know, have advised us to live each day as if it would be the last. So we can take that with a grain of salt, but it's not a bad thing to keep in mind. Not being morbid, like I'm going to die tomorrow, but prioritizing what's important today. Because yes, you might get hit by a bus on the, after you leave here, or something else might happen more globally. So I think that's not a bad way to live. And uh, many people today tell me they don't have enough time to do all the things they want to do or have to do. And I've written a whole book about this, Buddha Standard Time, Living in the Holy Now, because it's an illusion. Time is, is so subjective. We have all the time in the world. It's up to us how we use it or, or squander it or lose it and abuse it. Um, it's not time we lack, but it's focus and priorities. So I think making our priorities is very important. So as for the bucket list, I would rather than think about the dream vacations. I think it's relevant to dig a little deeper and think about what our greatest contribution, what we would like to leave behind, what we've left unsaid, perhaps, to our loved ones whether it's apologies and reconciliation and forgiveness, whether it's I love you, I love you more than anything in the world, you're my apple in my eye, or whatever. I always say I love you when I leave my partner because I don't know if I'll ever see her again. And I like to say it, and it makes her happy. You know, what does a smile and an I love you cost? And I don't want to cheapen it, I'm just saying. I travel a lot. Um, I went to London uh, two weeks ago. I called a few special people, especially my godchildren, before I, I left. And they said, have a great trip. And I, you know, thank you. I, I didn't say, I'm flying over the ocean. I just wanted to say, I love you before I go, because I don't want to make them worry. But I was thinking like that. In this day and age, you have to think like that. So that's a little bit like using death as an advisor. As an advisor, as a touchstone, as a prioritizer. Keep, Buddha said, keep mortality and impermanence in the forefront of your mind. So you don't push procrastinate till later, things you really want to see done now. Thank mm -hmm. you.